make a decision, then you move on. When you move on, you don't look back. everyone, thank you for spending time with us and watching the Success Secrets program of the Malaysian Chamber of Commerce, Hong Kong and Macau. This is Stephanie Duan, the program host. I'm also a member of Meichian and an ex-journalist. Our guest of today's episode is Data Sri Nikar Chu. He has solid and broad experience in law and business sectors. Data Sri Ni is Special Investment Advisor to the Chief Minister of Benin. He is currently a board member of various Benin state government-linked companies and corporations, as well as private companies, and a director of Invest Benin and Benin Development Corporation. Data Sri Ni, very nice to talk with you today, and thanks very much for taking the offer to join the show. So uh, you, I have prepared a set of questions. Our focus today would be your management style. Uh, so appreciate that you could share with us your experience and insights. So my first question would be that uh, as a successful leader, how did you figure your uh, figure out your career path and from practicing lawyer to investment advisor, what's your success crystal? Um, I, I actually, I don't plan things. Um, I always believe in um, things sometimes is a little bit fated as far as my life is concerned. So um, if I look back for the past uh, 60, 60 years, um, actually, um, but I have a very um, varied sort of um, journey through these uh, 60 years. Uh, it is very interesting because um, I, I'm from a poor family. So, but then I got a chance to go to the United Kingdom to uh, study my, my, my law degree as well as uh, my bar and also my master degree. So, so actually um, it is it's very interesting. You got a scholarship. Sorry? You got a scholarship. So they sent you to. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, I come from a poor family, as I said, but um, somehow I um, got enlisted in the Malaysian uh, Royal Military College. I spent four years there, and then after that, I got a scholarship from the Ministry of uh, Defence, and then uh, to go to United Kingdom to uh, study law. So, so, so actually, I don't plan all this. It just happened, and after I came back, I did. Um, uh, I practice, and then somehow I just got involved with uh, politics, not because I get into politics, but uh, because um, I did uh, quite a bit of um, uh, this um, uh, social work with um, a lot of these uh, NGOs, non-government uh, organizations, and uh, somehow some of my friends in politics uh, invited me to join the parties. Uh, and, um, and, and from there, I got another chance uh, to uh, to contest uh, in uh, in one of uh, the parliamentary uh, election and uh, somehow uh, I just I, I got elected and that was how I uh, got into uh, politics. So so it is a little bit um, long winded, but it is not planned. Uh, I I think it's your uh, efforts and hard work paid off. Finally, it's not just come naturally. Uh, you spend a lot of efforts and then just things come to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, to a certain extent, I, I agree with you um, because I always believe that uh, as a human, we can plan, but it is uh, God that uh, disposes. So, 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 for example, um, I, I did plan to uh, study in the Royal Military College, uh, but whether I got in or not, it was uh, actually dependent on fate to a certain extent. <laughs> Um, but um, but um, I, I learned a lot of things uh, in the military college uh, that I feel that is a very um, a very important and very good for me to conduct my life uh, later. Mm, okay, sure. Uh, I would like to invite you to share with us a personal story or important person that has inspired your leadership journey and the impact on you. Can you share with us on that? Um, I would say that uh, the most impactful uh, experience that I have in my life uh, is actually uh, my admission uh, to the Royal Military College, right? Uh, but before that, um, I would say that when I was at a younger age, um, when I went to primary school, uh, because my parents were busy uh, looking for uh, how, how to earn a living, so I spent a lot of time in school. And I have a very good teacher that gave me 
uh, the confidence as well as um, uh, uh, gave me the necessary guidance in order for me to uh, get through uh, my schoolwork. So that was actually uh, my most important, um, uh, I would say, encounter in my life. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the second uh, very important encounter is actually the Royal Military College that I spent four years in. Now, um, in there, actually, um, there are many lessons that I learned. Um, for example, um, I learned that um, we, because it, is, it, it was a dormitory um, sort of um, residential uh, college, I have to live with uh, the multiracial um, members of uh, the Malaysian society. So I live with the Malays, I live with the Indians, I live with uh, the Orang Asli, as well as um, the indigenous uh, people of uh, Malaysia. So, so that is uh, a very, very important um, experience for me. So, so that is uh, more on the, on the social side, but um, under the military, I learned a few um, very important uh, principles in life that, um, I, that, that actually helped me along in, in my life later on. Uh, after many years of um, learning and also your experience uh, in study and work, uh, how would you describe your own management style? Uh, my, my management style is uh, actually very simple. I, I trust people. Uh, uh, there is a Chinese saying that uh, you, 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 um, you, you trust people once you use them. Uh, if you don't, you, you don't trust them, you don't use them. So once you use them, then you have to give them uh, the absolute trust so that uh, they can uh, carry out their, uh, their, their, their mission. So, so, so I think that is very important uh, for me. Um, so, so for me, it is relatively uh, simple uh, basing on that particular principle. Can you also share one of the proudest achievements in your leadership journey and what are the key learnings for you? Um, I think the important thing for me is um, making decision, making decision. You might feel that uh, making decision is so simple, isn't it? Every one of us make decision all the time. But you will be surprised that as you climb the ladder of um, the, the corporate ladder uh, or the social ladder, uh, more and more responsibilities are being put on you uh, for you to make a certain decision. And I noticed that uh, many, many people, they don't make decision. They just avoid making decision and uh, they let event or other people make decision for them. So actually, uh, my learning is that um, if you don't make decision, actually you are making a decision not to make the decision. So that means you let other people make the decision and uh, the event will make the decision for you. And uh, it is a very, uh, I would say that uh, sometimes very sad to see people doing that uh, because then later they will become a very defensive because once the event has, um, has uh, happened, then uh, they become um, uh, reactive rather than uh, seizing the initiative to uh, actually direct uh, the event uh, of the day. So, so, so that, that is uh, my key learning. But at the same time, I also feel that um, uh, um, having a positive and a can-do attitude is very important. That is what I learned also from the Royal Military College. Uh, can-do attitude means uh, by hook or by crook, you get the things sorted out. No but, no if, nothing. You just have to get um, the mission accomplished, no matter what is uh, put on you. So these two, when you put together, uh, I feel that uh, I feel that is very powerful because uh, you 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 just uh, undertake a mission, whether it's a mission possible or mission impossible, just to make sure that you try your best and make sure you give your best and uh, accomplish the, uh, the 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 mission. So so these these are the uh, the two lessons that I think is very important uh, in, in in my life. But how can people uh, train themselves to make good decisions and also uh, just uh, uh, to have the can-do attitude? Um, 
That one, I think sometimes is true life experience. Sometimes is a true training. Uh, for me, uh, it is um, a mixture of both uh, because uh, in the military days, uh, we, don't, um, we, we don't have excuses. Um, our, our instructor tell you to do something, tell us to do something at a certain time, you just delivered it. There is no question asked. Uh, no, no excuses to be given, irrespective of what happened. So, so, so that was actually uh, my upbringing and my training. Got it. And in your opinion, what is the biggest uh, challenge uh, facing business leaders today, especially on the, under the COVID-19 situation? Um, I think it is still uh, making decision. For example, uh, for example, in the Malaysia or in any countries, um, a leadership has to seize the initiative to make a decision, a decision every day, almost every day. For example, um, are you going to uh, buy the vaccine from the very beginning, whether you're going to buy the vaccine or not? Uh, how are you going to persuade people to take uh, the vaccine? Uh, whether you are going to lock down the economy, uh, whether you are going to impose um, uh, certain measures in order to contain uh, the pandemic, all these are decisions that need to be made one way or the other. Some decision might be right, some decision might be wrong. But once you um, make a decision, then you have to move on. And when you move on, you don't look back. And that is where... Uh, the other uh, tenet of uh, my training come into play. That is, uh, must be a can-do attitude. So once you make a decision, you move on, then you have to make sure that uh, you implement uh, your decision and um, you just find the best way out of uh, the situation, the difficult situation that you are in. So my last question is uh, from your experience. Could you share with us a winning tip for the future and young leaders? I think the young leaders nowadays, um, uh, I think life has changed quite a bit the way that uh, I know it. Uh, we used to, uh, first of all, the, the environment that uh, we were in. Uh, we, we come from uh, the baby boomer years were uh, relatively hard financially. So, so we have to uh, work our way through life in a different manner. Uh, the younger generation are better and now in terms of uh, financial comfort, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, opportunity for education, etc. So they are, they are, their situation might be a little bit different. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, um, the basic lesson, basic principle of life, uh, they do not change. Because after all, we are dealing uh, with human beings. Great, great. Thank you so much for your time. So these are all my questions. Uh, I look forward to having a chance to visit you in Benin or Hong Kong in the future. And many, many thanks to our audience with us. See you in our next episode. Thank you. Thank you very much. Definitely.